Good grief, my hands are all cut up. If I were to upload this video yesterday, considering all the comments y'all give me about my hair and my beard and now that I have scars and cuts on my hands, well, well, that would have made for a really good Halloween costume. And considering the fact that I was clearing out a creek and doing a little bit of a carpentry work as to why I got some of these cuts, that just adds to the story that much more. But it ain't Halloween anymore. It is November, so happy November. My wife and I had a record high of trick-or-treaters this year with a total of one. Now I have all this extra candy and I just don't know what to do with it. Hey! But I'm sure I can figure out something to do with it. And before we get going on about the ways to make money as a software developer, I just need to mention this because I've been flirting with the idea for a very long time now and I think I've finally made the decision. I'm about to hit this channel with the biggest change you've ever seen here. It's going to be the biggest change to my YouTube career. You're going to see that in about four months time. That's the reason I've been making so many of these brain dump videos like last video when I talked about how to actually go about getting a job as a software developer and it's like a 20 minute long video in this video however long it may be. I just want to give all of my information, all of the little tips and tricks and things I've learned over the past five, six or so years I've been doing this because like I said, it's going to be changing and I may be a little bit biased, but it's going to be changing for the better. And I 100% believe that y'all will think so as well. You just got to trust me on this. Which reminds me, I haven't created a computer science related video in quite some time and I know so many of y'all just started your computer science degree about a couple months ago. You're in your first semester, about to start your second. Many of y'all have been commenting and emailing me questions regarding computer science. So if you're watching this video right now, have computer science related question, leave that in the comment section below because I'm going to make a, a good old traditional CS Q&A video here in the next couple weeks. So how to go about making money as a software developer. This video we're going to be talking about various different ways on how to do that, most of which I have personally done. I know I'm not going over everything, every possible way to make money coding. So for those of you that have found out a different way on how to go about making money, also leave those down in the comment section below so people can go down there and learn other ways that I don't discuss in this video. I was this close to wrapping up this video until I realized that I forgot to add the disclaimer at the beginning of this video that I find incredibly important. That is, if you are not in a stage of your career where you would feel comfortable applying to a job, meaning you don't feel that your skills are good enough or your skills actually aren't good enough to actually obtain a job or do any type of development work in which you would make money, do not watch this video because I can't stress it enough. There are two types of people who try to go into coding and to software development. Those who think they can make a lot of money doing it and those who have a genuine interest in learning how to code and creating things with code. I'll let you guess who in the end makes a lot of money in software development. Hint, hint. It's the people who are genuinely interested in learning how to code. So if you are at the beginning stages of your career, don't focus on the money. You focus on mastering your craft the money will come later. So don't watch this video. I'm not worried about views. I'm not worried about watch time. Click off this video if you're not at the point where you ought to be making money and go start coding, start mastering your craft because that is how you're gonna be making money. Continue. The first way, very obvious, is that it's getting a job. In my personal opinion, I think this should be the first way you go about it because of the amount of knowledge and experience you gain while doing it. Being in a professional environment, working with a team where you can learn from your higher ups and your peers, that, that amount of education and knowledge I've gained doing that is unmatched. And I believe all of that information that you gain working in a professional environment for a company, whatever company that may be, will allow you to be better and allowing you to succeed in the other aspects of how to go about making money as a software developer. Now I've been harping on this, getting a job for the past few videos. A lot of other videos on my channel go over this, but there are a few different things that I wanna summarize in this section when it comes to making the money. So your location, your industry, and the type of company. The last two are kind of interchangeable, but location, typically you're gonna be making more money in Silicon Valley than you will working here in Hampton Roads of Virginia. One of the major factors in that is simply because the cost of living is much higher over there in California than it is over here in Hampton Roads of Virginia. And then when it comes to the industry, the company, like I said, over in Silicon Valley, you can have anything from the 
big established companies, tech companies, and then you can have all of these different tech startups that are heavily funded by venture capital. And instead of trying to figure out your exact ROI, how much money you can bring to the table, their main focus is building a really good product. Whether you agree with that or not, that's how a lot of these companies, companies operate. They're worried about going public and making money that way, getting acquired by uh, Facebooks of the world and getting paid that way instead of actually trying to figure out how their product can make them money. So if that is the case, you're, you may be getting paid a little bit more. Then there's other industries like you could be a coder or a software developer at a bank. You could be working for government on government contracts for a company who takes on government contracts or a software development firm who takes on contracts of the likes of transportation company, logistics industry. Those are very important factors. A few other very important factors are ones that I went over in further detail in the last video, how to actually get a job as a software developer, and that is the negotiation aspect of your salary, of getting that job, and what needs to come into play there are your benefits and the way of life of the company. Because if you have crappy benefits, you need to be getting paid a lot more in order to counteract that because benefits are very expensive. And then the way of life, if you can come in at whatever hours you choose, if you're an early bird, you wanna come in at six to two or seven to three and you get a paid lunch, then you may be willing to get paid a little bit less than someone who has to come in eight to five unpaid lunch and that is your hour set for every single day. There are other variables that come into play there, but you just need to take all of those into consideration when you're negotiating your salary. And remember, whatever you agree on, you're showing the company you're happy with this amount. Don't agree on a price, on a salary that you're unhappy with. Second way to go about making money, in my opinion, could very well be the dream way, and that is selling your programs. That could be selling your apps on the App Store, selling your front-end designs on Theme Forest, or people can use them on WordPress and Shopify, what have you, and selling your websites. The reason I say this could be the dream is because you don't have a company or a client telling you how to go about building this. What you get to do is you have an idea, you get to create the idea, see it through from zero, from A to Z, from zero to 100. You don't have someone saying, oh, well, I would like it to look like this, or I wish it would function like this. Sure, that input could help sometimes, but you having full creative control over your projects, at least for me, is a big plus. Well, I say getting a job, in my opinion, is the first way you should go about create, uh, making money as a software developer. This could be a way you go about making money before you go about getting the job while you're learning, maybe you have some skills, you create a few things on the side, try to make a little bit of money for yourself, or you can do it while you're you're at your job, not at your job, while you have a job and you can do it after work, or basically just any time in your career once you develop the skills, just know you have to be able to market it. You have to treat it like a business. And the ways to make money are putting your websites up for sale, putting your templates up for sale, and a very simple layout that we can go over is putting your iOS development apps up for sale. Now, I said this, the layout is simple. How you do it is simple. Not actually doing it is simple. I'm not saying everybody can make money this way, but a lot of people have made a lot of money this way. What do you do when you create an iOS application? Well, you put it on the App Store. When you put it on the App Store, how do you make money? Well, you can sell the application, you can have a subscription service, it can be a free application with in-app purchases, ad revenue. There are a few other ways to go about making money, but those are the primary ways. And I've also heard about people actually selling their code. I've heard about people creating front end and kind of like a skeleton of iOS applications and selling that for $500. So I'm not just saying a one time, I'm saying more like you would sell a template or a theme theme for a website, they sell it again and again and again. It's just a skeleton for a social media application on iOS. So creating something, a program, and then selling that, that is another way to go about making money. And now let's talk about freelancing. When I'm talking about freelancing in this video, basically whenever I'm talking about freelancing, I'm not talking about contract work. We're gonna talk about that in a second. I'm talking about you are basically a software development firm yourself. Software development firm, you have people coming to you to create web applications, websites, mobile applications, programs, whatever it may be, and then you have two, three, four, ten people on a team working on it. When it comes to you freelancing, it is you by yourself. Maybe you have a few people that you contract out the design or you contract out a few aspects of the application or the website, but you are ultimately the person that has to do everything within this business. The best way to get started like this 
when you have the experience of actually having a professional job, you get to see how they work in a professional environment. You can see how they work creating stuff within a company, how they work creating stuff for clients. And you can take that knowledge that you gain working at a job into your own freelance business. And then you also wanna make sure that you have a portfolio, which is what you'll be building when you're building those applications for yourself, for yourself to sell, like we talked about in the previous way to make money. Because if you are a client, what do you wanna see? You wanna see that you're hiring somebody who actually knows what they're, or rather they can actually do what they say they can do. I can sit here all day long, maybe have one application up there on GitHub, on my website portfolio and say, yeah, look, I can build you an iOS application. I can build you a website. Would you rather go with me who built one thing and say I can do it, or someone who has built 10 or, or 20 things in your realm, whether it be a, a website, an iOS application, I'm using these examples because this is what I've done in the past, and they are proving to you that they know how to do what they say they can do. One is talk to talk, the other is walk to walk. I'd rather go with somebody who has an established portfolio and you can see that they can actually do the work. Now when it comes to freelancing, this could warrant a whole entire video or even a whole entire course, and in fact, on this video sponsors platform, Skillshare, they do have plenty of courses when it comes to freelancing and business and marketing. And if freelancing is something that you're interested in, Skillshare would be a good place to go about it. Now, y'all know how I go about these sponsors. I have a video idea. Skillshare wants to sponsor a video and I tie them into a video. I want it to apply the best for you, for them, for me. That is why I'm integrating Skillshare into this video because they have numerous different courses and how to go about mastering your craft and making money in that craft. Like in this instance, we're talking about freelancing. Aside from freelancing, they have thousands of other courses in the realm of technology, coding, photography, videography, if that's something that you're interested to as well. And the cool thing is a lot of these courses, they don't take very long. If you're dedicated, it could take you a week, it could take you a month, but you can get two months for free when using the link in the top of the description. And that's it. And this is an unintentional segue what do those people do on Skillshare? The instructors, the teachers, that is exactly what they do. They create courses and they're able to make money. We're not in the sponsor, sponsorship section of this video anymore. We are in the next way on how to make money and that is teaching courses, teaching people how to code. Now, ideally, you'll be doing this for years. Maybe you've done freelancing, you have had a job, you've built your own applications, and now you want to to transfer that knowledge into somebody else, to somebody else, into somebody else, that's a weird, weird way to phrase that sentence. You wanna transfer your knowledge to somebody else, teach them how to go about coding, how to code. Now there are a couple different ways to go about this. There are platforms like Skillshare, you know me in, in the plural side, where you're able to create a course and sell it on the platform. Now, there are a few different requirements, there are a few different pros and cons when it comes to being an instructor on these types of platforms, and of course they get their own commission because they are supplying you with their current audience audience and they're also doing things like this sponsoring youtubers skillshare especially they're sponsoring youtubers they're sponsoring i'm sure bloggers and and other people in order to get viewers on their site for their instructors it's for them as well of course but for their instructors the more money they spend on marketing the more money you make as an instructor However, if I were to go about this, considering I have a YouTube channel and some of y'all would want to go about learning coding from me, maybe because you like the way I explain things, although I don't really feel like right now I am good enough to be teaching people, I just share my experiences, I would go about it creating my own website and hosting my videos on my own platform. That way there's no middleman, nobody taking out any money from any of these transactions other than you know the payment gateway and some of those website fees. A good example of somebody doing this is Coding Phase. I don't personally know Joe from Coding Phase, nor have I taken any of his courses, but in his videos, he seems like a pretty cool guy. He has courses on his own website. He also has a YouTube channel and he also runs ads. So he runs ads on, I've seen him on YouTube where he is trying to direct people to his courses on his own website. He has his YouTube channel where he's trying to direct people to his own courses on his own website. And of course, he is providing value on that YouTube channel as well. I'm not just trying to say that's like his, he's only doing it for a marketing venue, but he's trying to provide value. And if you want even more, you can purchase it here. I think that is a very good way on how to go about things. And speaking of the fact that he has a YouTube channel, that brings us around to our next way to go about making money, and that is being a YouTuber or a blogger. Now the ways you make money this route is ad revenue. So the ads that are played, mid-roll, pre-roll, post-roll, if you click on them or watch a certain duration of those ads, then the YouTuber that has the video in which you're watching gets paid. Another way is sponsors, like Skillshare sponsor this video, that's another way to go about making money. 
and then affiliate links. Now those are the three primary ways in which you can make money as a blogger or a YouTuber. There are also other ways I'm sure you've seen people sell merchandise. They actually start companies, they launch companies and sell to their audience and then they also can teach, which is exactly what we're talking about in our previous way on how to make money as a software developer. They create a course, they guide people from their YouTube channel to their courses and that's another way to go about making money. Now the way I go about YouTube, I don't like to go about teaching or tutorials although maybe you can consider this teaching, what I try to do is share my experiences and document my journey in an educational manner. On the flip side, you have somebody like Sean Allen. If you are anyone interested in iOS development, I'm sure you've heard of him. He's on YouTube. Sean Allen, very smart iOS developer. He has a weekly series called Swift News where anything that happened within that past week when it comes to Swift and iOS development, he addresses in that video. And he also goes over tutorials when it comes to iOS development, anything from the beginner stuff all the way up to the expert stuff and he does make a few other videos when it comes to his journey as an iOS developer recently he just talked about how he goes about making money on YouTube he actually lays it all out you can see the actual numbers he has implemented many of the different ways to make money that I laid out in this this blogging and, and youtuber ways of making money as a software developer but one that I didn't address and what he does is he created a book wrote a book sounds better he wrote a book about his journey into becoming an iOS developer going through boot camp and things of that nature now he's only doing YouTube part-time I think that is how he words it he does it 20 hours a week and for his other 20 hours a week and 40 hour a week I don't know how much how many hours he actually works he does contracting and that is our next way to go about making money as a software developer and that is contract work like I said I consider this different than freelancing just in my own mind the way I'm explaining it while I said freelancing is you are basically your own software development firm I consider contracting you are going into a company on a contract and working with a team there like when I worked in Norfolk Southern, while not software developers, we had business analysts who would come in, systems analysts who would come in, they would be on contract, and that's how they would make money. You also had some who worked remote. With this, a lot of people go through a firm who specializes in getting people different contracts. Now, this is one of those that I haven't personally done. I just know that this is a way you can go about making money as a software developer. This is a way that Sean has gone about making money as a software developer, but instead of doing government contracts and military contracts like a lot of people do here where I'm from, Hampton Roads of Virginia. He has done it over in Silicon Valley in California. And another way I'm going about making money that I haven't personally done, I wasn't even sure I was going to include it in this because like I don't know anyone who has done it. I've never personally done it. You can look into it on your own or if you've done it, leave a little bit of information in the comment section. I would appreciate it to learn more about it. I know the viewers of this video would appreciate it as well. And that is fulfilling bounties in the open source community. People need a particular feature done on an open source project on GitHub. People are willing to pay money for these features to be implemented. I'm not sure that GitHub is a platform in which they collect the money and pay out the money. I'm sure there are dedicated platforms for that, but like I said, I don't know much about it. I've just heard of it. And that brings us to the end of this video. Like I said, if there are any ways that I didn't discuss that you can make money coding, leave those in the comment section below. Make sure they are ethically proper. I don't want no black hat, hat hacking going on or I can sell all these social security numbers for all this money, all these credit card numbers for all this money. No. You, you will get banned from the channel if you do any of that unethical, illegal nonsense. So just, just leave that at the door. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. I mean, if you're watching it this far in the video, you probably liked it, right? Like this is the end of the video, you're watching it. You probably liked the video, so help me out with the YouTube algorithm, leave a big thumbs up. Help me out with the YouTube algorithm, leave a comment down in the description below. If you like videos like this, I'm going to be trying to pump out as many tip videos when it comes to computer science and software development here in the next three to four months before the big old change on the channel happens. So be sure to subscribe. And if you're anything interested in coding at all, coding at all, you just find it entertaining, be sure to subscribe because this big change, you're going to really like it. I'll see you on the next one.